today's episode on reawakening, I'm taking Andy Frudge's job from him. I am going to sit there. I'm toppling over his dynasty and everything else. I'm taking the job. Then once I'm done taking the job, I'm going to sit there and turn him into a stay-at-home husband that Ruth can sit there and just beat on a daily basis. Okay? Wow. That's okay. It's just right now, it's about time. After all this and after all this garbage he's put everybody through, and just look at this face. Who would want to sit there and make this face your head pastor? So, back to this illustrated hit. Back to this illustration. Now, the point of this this episode today is, don't be easily offended. If you took that really to offense, I'm not apologizing for that. So I toppled your hero. So I don't think he'd be really offended by that either. Because you know what? I used to have fun beating him up when he was a little kid. It was great. <laughs> I used to take that on. So. So now, to go to the scriptures about this in James 1, where, you know, this idea of not being easily offended comes from. So James, a bondservant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, my brethren, counted all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally without approach, reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the brother let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation but the rich in his humiliation because as a flower of the field he will pass away for no sooner has the sun risen with the burning heat than it withers the grass its flowers fit, flower fit, falls and its beautiful appearance perishes so the rich man will also fade away in his pursuits blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he's been approved he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say, when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he, he himself tempt anyone, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's um, full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own he will be brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce righteousness of God. So, so right here, we need to be slow to wrath, okay? We need to be slow to wrath. We want to produce the righteousness of God. What's one of the most important things? It's not just about, when somebody says good, what does he mean good? We want to be righteous. Most of, most of the ministry I've been in, people, I've had people smoke pot around me. I don't see the big deal. Or if the person wants to sit there and just sit there and crank back some vodka, okay, I don't partake in it. Now, if you have weaknesses to partake in it, you just don't get offended by these things. I mean, so... Part of it, when we're not going to be offended quite as easily, we need to grow some thick skin. So, therefore, lay aside all filthy, filthiness and overflow of the wickedness and receive the meekness of the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But you want to be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the, of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. 
for he observes himself, he goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the, of the work. And this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks that he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, his, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is to visit the widows and orphans in their troubles, and keep oneself unspotted from the world. So, if we if we keep what's it called being offended so easily, we're not we're not going to become forgetful hearers of the word. You know, you're going to be forget. You know, just if you only hear only, and you're not going to do anything, nobody's nobody owes you a living. Nobody owes you anything. And if you put up offenses, you know, a lot of it is you get filthiness and the overflow of wickedness. All you're doing is causing divisions within the church. I didn't like how he delivered the message. Well, suck it up, bucko. You didn't like how he delivered it. I mean, if there's something really wrong with what he said, that's a problem. If he's spitting out their heresy, that's a problem. Or is he's basically flipping you off in the message? That's really a problem. But if he's just matter of fact frank and just telling you the truth, you know, you got to run away from your sins. You know what? Don't be offended by that. That's actually a gift. Now, now look at the environment that Paul had to go through. So look at what Paul went through. If you're talking about somebody who's slow to be offended, practicality, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more and laborers more abundant and stripes above measure in prisons more frequently in deaths often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes means 40 lashes minus one. So three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, a night and a day I have been in the deep, in the journeys often, in the perils of waters, in the perils of robbers, in the perils of my own countrymen, in the perils of the Gentiles, in the perils of the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among the false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings and cold and nakedness, and besides all, besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. Who is weak and I'm not weak? Who is made to stumble and I do not burn with?